Welcome to this first video of Introduction to Practical Theology. In this video, we're going to begin to explore the question, what is practical theology? What are the different components uh, of it? And we'll really do it in this course by breaking it into two parts. What do we mean by theology? What is theology? And then what do we mean by practical? So some questions for us to think about. First of all, what is practical theology? What is pastoral care? We will spend quite a bit of time kind of talking through what does it mean to enter into the lives of young people in youth ministry or kids in Christian education. Or let's say some of you want to be a pastor at some point, and so you take on a congregation. What does it mean to enter into the lived experience of people and help them, help walk them through things that are both good and, and not so good? What is youth ministry? So a big part of this course will be kind of uh, wrestling with what we mean by youth ministry. We'll look at the history of it. We'll look at some of the, um, the new ideas that are kind of coming out in, in ministry and, and talk about um, min youth ministry kind of from a big perspective. And then what is Christian education? We'll spend a little bit of time on this. Uh, it can mean a lot of different things. For some, it means Christian day schools. For most people, it means Sunday school a vacation Bible school, uh, maybe youth ministry can get can get added into that. Um, increasingly, we're talking about education in the terms of formation, and so even spiritual formation can get connected with this. So these are some of the main questions that we're going to look at through this semester. We want to begin, though, by really wrestling with that word theology. Uh, what is theology, and what do we mean when we talk about that word? Now, some of you maybe have different perspectives, come from different backgrounds. Maybe some of you really have explored theology and the different questions and categories and language that, that theology provides. Uh, here at Northwestern, you will uh, take a, a course, Christian Story 2, in a historical theology course. And what we want to do in this class is at least begin to think about what we mean when we use that term theology. And I'm going to try to walk you through some different theological perspectives. And then when we think about practical theology, kind of think about it in relationship to some of the other branches uh, of theology. First of all, it's important for us to see what theology is not. Theology is not the study of God. Now, as you think about breaking the word down, theology, theos, and logos, um, you know, if we think of biology, um, the study of the bios, of, the, of living organisms, but theology, we're not actually studying uh, God. Because if you really think about it, can we fully capture God within our language and within our categories? Now, throughout this course, there will be times where we'll talk about the difference between things we can say about God and then ways in which maybe God is beyond some of the language uh, that we use. But it's important for us, I think, to see that theology is not looking at God under a microscope. We're not dissecting God in a way we might dissect a frog or, or something else. So that's what I mean when we say it's not the study of God. What we're actually studying is is revelation. How has God revealed God's self? How has God spoken? So as we think about revelation, we think about scripture, we think about some of the doctrines of the church, some of the, the historical perspectives of the, of the church. Now ultimately we'll, we'll talk about how uh, God reveals God's self in Jesus Christ from a Christian perspective. But that's really what we're studying then is how uh, has God revealed God's self, and then how should we understand that revelation? I would also say we're, we're studying people's experiences of God. When, whenever anybody asks me why should I care about what Augustine thought, or Julian of Norwich, or John Calvin, um, my response is that we all have our experiences of the divine. We all have these experiences of God. And it's important, I think, for us to um, try to understand other people's experiences of God. And if we think about theology as that kind of endeavor, where we're looking at the ancient church and the patristic church, and we're, we're thinking about some of the questions that they were wrestling with, and we think about the medieval church, and then our own contemporary experience, we're really wrestling with how other people have experienced 
God and the divine and how they've interpreted the revelation that God has given. The other thing that I think we need to, to think about when we study theology is our communal understanding. That when we think about the church or the Christian community, we kind of come together and when we're a part of a particular church or denomination or tradition, we use similar language to talk about God and God's work in the world. And I think it's important to, to understand that common language that people will use. Now, some of you might come from churches that uh, are more congregational, free church type, uh, you know, big uh, churches that are kind of on their own, and that's totally fine. Uh, and others of you might come from more traditional liturgical churches that are part of denominations. It's important for us to recognize that all of these communities have a way of speaking, uh, have rituals, um, have uh, ways of talking about our experience of God. And so when we talk about a communal understanding, that's really, uh, really what we're talking about. How does a church that you go to and you worship and you've been a part of that church for a long time, what are the ways in which they talk about who God is? What are some of the doctrinal ideas that are really, uh, really important? What are some of the experiential things? Maybe some of you come from more Pentecostal churches. Um, so what are some of the more experiential things that are an important part of the community? When we study theology, we're studying, first and foremost, the revelation of who God is. But we're also studying how people have understood that revelation and practiced it throughout history. Now, it's important for us to think about kind of what is theological reflection and what are the different forms of it. And I think up front in this course, it's important that we kind of get this out of the way because uh, some students, that they'll come in and they want to uh, say, well, this is conservative or this is liberal or whatever. And I want to help us kind of talk through those two terms so we better understand uh, what, what we mean when we use them, and hopefully come at kind of a common understanding of what kind of theological reflection uh, we're doing as we think about practical theology. So all theological reflection really has two sides. The first is the revelation, the doctrine, or the Bible. So you will hear people uh, talk about, you know, I don't, I, I don't necessarily need doctrines, I believe in the Bible, right? Um, and so you begin with this revelation, these words in these different books uh, in the Bible. Um, but you also have human experience. Uh, so as we think about what it means to be a human being and the ways in which we know the Bible, um, you know, it's so interesting to hear people say, well, I only believe, you know, the Bible is all I need. And yet we interpret the Bible in a language and we understand the ancient categories and then we interpret them for our contemporary world. And so part of theology is the human experience. How do we take that revelation and make it understandable for human beings living in the 21st century? So when you think about theological reflection, we're always dealing with these two things. On the one side, we have revelation, doctrine, Bible, the content, and then you have human experience. Now, when we talk about liberal and conservative, what you're going to see is these different terms refer to kind of a different form of emphasis on uh, between these, these two things. So in a traditional or conservative theology, the emphasis goes on the doctrine or the Bible over human experience. So Christians or church traditions who, who want to say that they're conservative or traditional uh, are going to say, well, what does the Bible say? And they're going to really try to unpack the language and the words and the meaning and all of that. Now, it's important for us to recognize that there's still a human element in there because they're, they're reading language, they're dealing with ideas, they're dealing with cultures, but they're trying to focus much more on the content of, all right, what does the Bible say and what is this revelation over human experience? Um, so, for example... Um, you know, two examples might be uh, whether women can teach or preach in the church and um, the, w how we deal with the LGBTQ community. Now, in a conservative theology, there's a tendency to say, all right, well, the Bible says X, Y, and Z, therefore, you know, this. Um, 
And they're not as concerned with kind of the human experience and trying to understand culture and, and those types of things. So some of you, that might be more familiar where that really is the emphasis of your church. It's much more traditional, conservative. On the progressive or the, what we would call the liberal side, there's much more of an emphasis on the human experience over doctrine in the Bible. Now, I want to make this clear. Still believe the Bible is God's revelation, are still seeking revelation. But on this side, you get more of an emphasis on, well, we need to interpret, or what is the cultural context, or there's much more of, a, of a, an emphasis or a willingness uh, to give ground to kind of how that doctrine or content uh, makes sense within a particular cultural context. And so you can see that you get these movements, right, of the traditional and the progressive, and they're really kind of two sides of this theological reflection. Revelation, doctrine, Bible on the one hand, human experience on the other. I want to emphasize both liberal Christians and conservative Christians emphasize both. They both participate in both. Really what we're talking about here is which one gets the emphasis. Now here's the, the claim that I want to make here for this class. I actually think that there's a better way, and I think there's a way for us to get beyond these categories of liberal and conservative. And I, I think we can do that by really talking about the human experience of interpretation, of hermeneutics, that we're, we're always having to interpret. And just because we say we have to interpret the Bible, and we have to use language and so on, it doesn't mean uh, that we're overemphasizing the human side of things. We would talk a lot about the Holy Spirit being involved in that um, interpretation. I think the important thing for us to recognize here is that God speaks to us within our human condition and therefore uses our human means to, to speak to us, to encounter us. God becomes human in Jesus Christ, that we believe in the incarnation. It's the whole center of the, the Christian faith. And so therefore, I, I don't think we need to overemphasize one or the other. The question for us is how do we hold both revelation and human experience together in proper tension? Now, one of the theologians, you know, we'll talk about Karl Barth would always say, well, God's action always precedes human action. So God speaks first and then we respond. And we'll, we'll talk about that. Uh, but for our purposes right now, I really want to to, to see if we can kind of get beyond the liberal conservative stuff and really talk much more about this kind of hermeneutical or interpretive approach to trying to understand God's revelation and human experience. Now, especially when we talk about practical theology, um, we need to take human experience seriously. Biblical theology is going to do it. Systematic theology also is, is, is as well. But they, they can live a little bit more in the world of ideas. When we're dealing with you know, high school students or dealing with young kids, we're dealing with human beings. And we're dealing with people who are a part of a culture and they've learned a language and they're part of family systems. And so therefore, within practical theology, we have to pay close attention to that human experience side. And what I want us to think about is not liberal and conservative, but really that third way, that kind of uh, interpretive or hermeneutical approach. All right, so what are the different forms of theology? Um, and you, th actually, you know, they may, uh, other people might give different categories here as well or break them into more categories, but for our purposes, these will work. You have what is called systematic theology. And systematic theology really deals with um, doctrines and concepts and ideas about who God is and creation and, and incarnation and atonement theory and all these types of things. Uh, biblical theology focuses on the biblical text and really is trying to draw out what is the text saying and what are the ideas and concepts uh, that we, we hear or we encounter through the biblical story. Historical theology wants to look at the development of the theological ideas through history. So uh, here at Northwestern, we teach you Christian Story 2, and you, you take this class and you begin with um, the early church and you move to the 21st century. And the historical theology is looking at uh, 
how do these theological concepts change uh, over time in the context of these different communities? Now, philosophical theology is very similar to systematic theology in that it wants to get at uh, some, some kind of basic philosophical uh, ideas. Uh, and then practical theology is what we're going to focus on. Now, the question then is, well, what's the relationship between them? Well, it, it, as I've, I've kind of described them a little bit going through here, uh, I won't take the time to walk through kind of all these, these different things here. Um, I want you to look at this picture. It says feedback loop. And in a way, what we're really doing is we're thinking about, inter so if you start on the left, exegesis is interpretation, the revelation of God. Um, we interpret God's word, biblical theology, historical theology, how that word gets interpreted or understood through history and different cultural contexts. And then systematic theology are the different ideas, the systems of thought, and again, things like creation and humanity, anthropology. Uh, salvation, atonement theory, uh, eschatology, all these different words that describe kind of different conceptual ways of really thinking about the biblical and historical uh, theology. And then you have here in this chart, it's called pastoral theology, and we're calling it practical theology. Pastoral theology would just kind of fit under the umbrella of practical theology. Now, some people want to put these things on like a scaffold and would put them in the order you would see of the arrows going from left to right. That you move from exegesis to biblical to historical to systematic to pastoral. And they might say then practical theology is just simply kind of the application of all of these different theological ideas. Now, I don't think that's right. Um, and in fact, that's why I like this little chart. Because each of these different ways of doing theology actually informs the other. And one of the things that I want to emphasize, and we'll see this as we, we kind of explore some of the reading, is practical theology is not just application. There's a lot of biblical theology happening, historical theology, uh, there's philosophical theology. Uh, we're going to spend some time looking at philosophy during this, this class. Um, all in an attempt to get at that interpretive or hermeneutical approach to understanding revelation. And so that's why I wanted to, to emphasize that. Because for us, it's, it's going to be a question of how we interpret revelation. What is God saying about who God is? But the other thing we have to do in practical theology is we have to interpret the context of the human person. The, the, the cultural, the political, the economic. I mean, all of these different things that um, people are caught up in our task as practical theologians is to interpret those things and bring them together. Uh, youth ministry, for example. You can't do youth ministry without trying to understand what is the context? Uh, what is the world that is forming and shaping young people? What are the issues that they're caught up in? Uh, and then entering into a youth group, not just to, to do games or to get people to love Jesus. We want them to love Jesus. But the question then is, well, what does loving Jesus mean? And what does it look like in this particular context? And how, how does it look different for each individual young person that you're going to encounter? So I think it's important we understand these different um, disciplines kind of within theology in a broad sense. And some of you will take classes um, in the... Uh, in the major, you'll, you're going to do classes where you study the Bible and where you study systematics. What we're going to do here in the youth ministry program, and in this class in particular, is begin that process of looking at theology, looking at the revelation of who God is, but then also trying to apply it to the human person. So as we think about practical theology... These are the categories uh, that we're working with. Now, there might be more, but as we think about the church, as we think about the Christian community, what are some of the tasks or actions that take place within the Christian community? Christian education, spiritual formation, worship, preaching, youth ministry, mission and evangelism, pastoral care. These are all things that fall under uh, the umbrella of practical theology. Now, for this what we're going to focus on is the youth side of things. But as we think about the youth side of things, we'll be looking at 
a lot of these. We're going to be talking about what does mission look like? What does it look like to evangelize? Uh, what is Christian education? What is spiritual formation? What is pastoral care? And at different points, we'll touch on worship and liturgy and and even the, the task of preaching. What does it mean to proclaim the gospel? Um, what does that look like in the context of youth ministry? So what I wanted you to see here in this first video is really to kind of set the, the groundwork for you to think about what it is you are actually going to be studying during this semester and then also as we continue on in this course. It's important, I think, to put these things kind of in that context. Now, the first thing that I want to do is really focus on the theology piece and just give you some basic theological concepts and ideas that will inform how we begin to think about pastoral care and how we begin to think about uh, youth ministry. So we'll pick that up next time.